had a COVID test already. Yep, already went, drove 20 minutes, get a COVID test. Both nostrils. They pay, uh, production pays for it. I got a shoot that just came in last night. At 9.30 at night, they're like, hey, available on Wednesday. And it's a voiceover at the production company. Uh, an hour long, maybe, total of shooting. Uh, $800 for labor, $800 for equipment. Well, they said $800 for labor. I'm like, okay, can you also swing $800 for gear? And they're like, yes, thank you so much. Okay, we'll be back in touch with you. I'm like, it's just crazy. I mean, the money in this business. Now, I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm telling you this for you to know and to hear it and to know that there's money behind everything in the professional film industry because they got to get it right because there's money behind everything that I'm working for and that you are working for. All of the professional work requires money. I mean, requires, um, there's money there. Okay, let me get it set up here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes, so uh, just know that within every craft out there, obviously there's money when you can make it as a big actor, a big director, a big producer. But on the way there, the whole point is to have a great life. And there are really great jobs that pay really well on the way there that actually teach you what you need to learn anyway to become that great actor, producer, director. And my philosophy is to have very big goals, to really shoot for the top goals, because that sets up your mind frame so that you're doing the right things and having the right conversations and seeking out the right kind of people. It sparks your mind to be thinking like a top person versus I just want a job. Because I get emails all the time, I just want a job. I'm like, no, you don't just want a job. You want a great life. You want to go to the top. You want to become one of the best. And, you know, it's not like that's so obvious. I mean, I know Michael's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Neil's like, yeah. I know that, you know, you guys are, you got this. But I didn't get this probably 10 years in. And then I remember I was on an airplane. So I was doing fine. Okay. I've been doing this for 22 years, about 10, 10 or 12 years ago, I don't know what it was, but I remember about 10 years in, I was on an airplane, and um, by that time, I had already started a couple other businesses, and we were buying real estate in Jacksonville, Florida, and I was flying back, and I was like, uh, all of a sudden it occurred to me, I'm like, you know what? What if you committed to being a top person, like an absolute top person? Like, I was good. See, what happens in your career? You do it for so long, and people call you, and you work, and you work, and you work, and you can get, at least I got, a little bit kind of lax and a little bit like expecting it, you know? Um, and I'm like, all these people love me. You know, I just show up. I do my thing. This is so simple. And then sometimes I'd get into a situation where it was like, holy shit, and I'd get butterflies in my stomach, and I'd be just like, holy shit. You know those moments. It's always when there's something that's thrown at you, you're not quite prepared for, you didn't think about it, or you forgot something, or something screwed up, or you should have been paying attention, and something got away with you, uh, or got away, and now you're like, holy fuck, holy shit. Because we care so much about our careers and the job, you know, it, it's very, it can be very emotional. So anyway, um, after, after about 10 years, I'm working all the time. I'm like, you know, working with top people all the time. And I just remember thinking, you know what, your equipment, you're not, you don't show up, complete everything ready. Everything's not totally clean. You're it is mostly in your mindset. I'm, I'm talking about like just pristine, like everything's totally in order. I know where everything is. I'm just like, everything is so wired. I read the boards before I go. And I, you know, like I used to do when I started. I, I'm like, you're getting a little bit lax. Why don't you start acting, behaving, being? Because it's, you know, that being thing, being. It's where you are being that, like a top professional. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're not, you haven't been. So it's only a small shift in the way that you're thinking 
that that's all you got to do. Just shift, small shift. It's not like, oh, I got to overhaul everything. I got to buy some equipment. I've got to just start change my approach. And um, I did that. And I, so it was so, it, it, the funny thing is, is that there's so many benefits that come from that. You know, all of a sudden, first of all, the job even becomes even easier because you eliminate the stress because you're so damn prepared. You stand up a little straighter because you're like, I am, I am a top professional. I'm not like, oh, grateful for the job. I'm like, they should be hiring me because I am really fucking good. Standing there, that's so powerful, you know? Because people hire you based on the energy beaming out of you. It's not even what you say. It's just, it's so funny. You walk on set with that certain kind of energy and people are like, I like that person before you even open your mouth. It's just the look on your face, that energy that you have. So yes, there's a lot of layers. There's a lot to learn and um, it's worth it. It's so worth it, you guys. This industry, it's worth it. You will grow so much to be, get to the top levels in this industry and it is going to be the best thing for you, the best thing you've ever done. And I bet I suspect that Michael, Vishal, Antonio, Megan, Neil, Martin, you're on the front row here, you are already finding that you have been becoming your best self because of the film industry. Yes. So it's already working as magic. Yeah, we won't do it for sales. We won't do it for medical. We won't do it for finance or Wall Street or even our own money, like money, making money. We'll do it because we love the art, we love the business, we love the people. Um, we just feel so fortunate to be able to do this for a living. A creative job that you can make that kind of money. Yeah, so tomorrow I have this job, $1,600 for one hour of work. Crazy. I'm so grateful for it, you know? And I f almost feel a little bit embarrassed to even ask for that additional $800 for gear. But I, if I know that if I don't do that, then they won't budget it next time. And then I'm actually hurting other people that are in the business. So we have to keep our rates up. And plus they want us to anyway because the production company is not paying for it any way the client is. <laughs> and so you have to learn all of these ways of negotiating and understanding. And then that's also get a factor because I like, oh, I love her. She just gets it. She understands where, what we've got to deal with, what's going on over here. So often people just understand their job, but they don't understand other jobs. What makes you a master, and you can go through your whole career not even thinking about other people and other jobs, and have a pretty good career, a mediocre career, but to really think like we're talking about here. You're really just paying attention and maybe asking some questions to get an understanding of what it's like for that producer, so that you're able to be like, butter to work with. Make sense? Great. Yes. We're on the same page. Okay. Cool. So I'm, I'm streaming on Instagram. I guess I'll go on Facebook too. On her Facebook page real quick. And um, this is going to be kind of cool. Like workshop day. We'll go over these resumes too. I don't, did not get very many. Um, one second while it sets up the late, the live thing. I knew you knew what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then on Friday, oh, I'll just wait a second here. Oh, got to put in the title now. Um, today, call, come, listen, or watch. Yay. Oops. Yay. I like to write stupid things. <laughs> Don't you? I like to be funny. Um, funny in my own mind. Anyway, um, yeah, and then Friday, I'm working with Jennifer Hudson on another commercial, and um, it's going to be fun. Uh, I get to work with my husband on that day, and uh, that day is going to be another $2,000, and then he's going to be another $700. So $2,700 for two of us in one day. Now, the reason why I say that is not to talk about myself. It's to think about you again. Yes, I'm sure that you've got brothers, sisters, significant others, people that you care about that 
you never thought of, maybe they could work in the film industry. Not everybody's cut out for it, as you know. But some people that have that can-do attitude, that figure things out, they can do very well in the film industry. So you can work with people that you love. You can bring them into the industry. I brought, jo first person I brought into the industry was Marla, Joe's sister. And I brought her in, well, when I say I brought her in, I showed her how to do it, which is a lot of the same kind of conversation that we're having here, except now it's so much more refined. And she started in San Diego, and then she moved up to LA, and she started working for E! Entertainment. And she tells a story. She was doing the stuff, doing the stuff, you know, like getting on shoots, working for free, getting experience, so scared the whole time. And then she gets a call for E! Because I'm telling her what to do. All of a sudden, she gets a call working for E! Entertainment. And I'm like, really? They called you? Because they hadn't even called me yet. And she's like, yeah, they just called me, and I have the first shoot. I'm like, okay, well, remember everything. Go over all the equipment, take the batteries out, put them back in, turn it up, turn it on, check the mic line level, you know, and just like go over everything that morning three times. And remember everything I told you, and I quizzed her, and so she's like, okay, I'm right here, okay, I'm right here. I'm so nervous. So, hey, we've all been there. And so they're shooting at Paramount. <laughs> So she's going to Paramount Studios, her first job for E. And she's at the gate and to like go in there to press the button and to go into the parking garage and start, you know, and then go down to meet everybody because that's where you park and they go down and meet everybody at the designated stage. And she's like, she's, she describes it. She's like, she's sitting in her car. She's got her gear with her. And she's just like, if I press that button, I have to go in there and meet everybody and actually do this. She's like, if I don't press a button, I can just leave and just say, ah, this was something that I didn't really want to do. She's like, I'm changing my life right now by pressing this button. She's like, ah, press the button. <laughs> and so the, the thing goes up and she drives in and she goes to the job and she's like, and she's got this little voice. Hi. And she just has a little, little kid voice. She's not a kid. She's, you know, hello, my name is Marla. Okay. Um, all right. What are we doing? And uh, the job went fine, and they hired again, and again, and again, and again. She worked for E a lot, but it's that moment. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. All right. So, um, let's see. Um, hey, were you guys here when I did this presentation? Uh, were, were you here, Michael? Okay, you were here, yes. Um, Martin, were you here? Vishal, were you here? Huh? Antonio, were you here? Yeah. Megan, don't, can't tell. Megan's a black box. Sure, turn your camera if you can. And Neil, you were here, yeah? No? Oh. Okay. Are you an actor? Neil? Okay. All right. I know Michael's an actor. Uh, Martin, I think you're an actor? Yeah? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Mohini, Shadman, turn on your cameras. I got to see you in the second row. Why is it that the first row, everybody's got their camera off? Because they are the early ones here, the ones that are just like, I'm here, I'm here ready to work. And then the second row, always every single person here has their camera off. Why is that? Less committed, just kind of listening in, multitasking, doesn't want to show themselves. I don't know, but it's interesting. Interesting. It's also true that people in the first row tend to decide that they're going to do this and change their life. And then I see them in six months. I see them in a year. Then I see them at my house. Uh, and uh, I don't know why that is. It's commitment, possibly. I don't know. I'm just telling you what I'm observing here. Everybody in the second row has got their camera off. I don't know what that means. I could be pissing you off right now. I hope not. I hope I'm not pissing you off. And the third row, same thing. But the first row, <laughs> Antonio, Vishal, Martin, Michael, Megan, Neil. Megan's the only one that has her camera off. Okay. All right, let's go into it. This, let's just review this really fast, just for Neil. Okay, so everybody that's an actor has a shitload of stuff that you've got to do. Holy shit. You, this is why I know you'll be successful. Because you have nerves of steel, you have perseverance of steel, you will not give up of steel, you're going against what everybody's telling you not to do, and you're in a survival job that gives you flexibility. Holy shit. 
you're going, you feel like you're going up a mountain here. Okay, fine. Okay, you're going to have to do all these things. But it becomes a lot easier once you get inside the business and you can build a base of people that know you. If you work inside the business, then it will become so much easier to do all these things because you'll meet people here that will tell you the best classes, where to go for headshots. Um, you'll actually start building a reel of professional work instead of the spotty student films that come in, come there, sometimes you get the footage, you kind of piece it together, they, you know, the, you're lit wrong, the sound's not good, whatever. Professional reel is much better. So instead of doing this all first and hoping that somebody's going to discover you or bring you in or you're going to be good enough, this can take 10 years, which is why you hear from your acting coaches, well, it can take you 10 years. When you look at a lot of actors out there, it's taken them 10 years to start getting consistent acting work. And then it might just be a couple of roles in a year and they make, make maybe 20 grand in a year. Not bad. In fact, for everybody else, those are real credits. That's real TV shows. They're doing really good making 20 grand a year. And do it, do it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying add to this plan something really big that's gonna be like a rocket ship beneath you and that is building a base first through shoots, through film shoots, professional film shoots that you work on with people. Okay, because the beauty of this is that you're just meeting people all the time. You get connections, those are connections. You're meeting producers, you're meeting directors. You got credibility because you know everybody. That's awesome. Because your biggest problem as an actor is you don't know anybody. You can't get to know anybody. The connections, which is the most important thing, the industry runs on connections you cannot get if you try to gold plate yourself first. Gold plate yourself second or maybe third. Do this, but do it after you start here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already done some of this stuff. Fine, that's awesome, great. So you got some stuff that you can show and talk about and you've done it and you understand it. Now you're really going to add to your understanding when you're on professional sets every single week and meeting people and seeing other, those working actors that you're going to work with, that you can observe and talk to. When the pressure is not on you, pressure's on, pressure's on them. The pressure's on the producers. The pressure, pr the pressure is on the producers, the directors, those actors, and you get to be there and observe, make friends, have very like low key but really good conversations with them that will help you so much over here. You know, you get, you make connections with, and every single shoot, you're, you're meeting different producer, director, and different actors. I mean, just one day you can meet like 15 different producers, directors, and actors. That's one day of work. Okay, let's add another day. Now we got a different producer, director, and different actors again. Now let's add a third day of that week. Another producer, director, and different actors that you can ask over and over again. Hey, who do you get classes with? Who's your agent? How'd you do your resume? How did you build your body of work? Who else have you worked with? What other stuff you've worked on? Did you get into commercials first? Who's your theatrical agent? Who's your commercial agent? How did that all start? The information is great. Also, when you talk to people that have done it, that are really good at it, then you start to be like, ah, it's just a business. It's just like, they're just a couple years ahead of me. I really am grateful for this information. And you will start to relax and approach this like the business that it is. You'll be the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial actor that you are, but you're doing it in a way that gets you totally connected where you're making money. Instead of the survival job, you're making money working on professional sets. Which jobs? The burning question, jobs, jobs, jobs. Okay, how, how, how? There are many jobs. And you should think about and be open to all of them just to learn. Because that learning mindset is so damn attractive to everybody. It's how you open the door with directors and producers because directors and producers, they don't want to talk about acting classes and, you know, method act. They're like, oh, oh, oh. But, but that's all you can talk about. They're just like so bored. But if you can talk about lighting and other people that you're working with and other projects and the, this show starting next week, they're just like, oh, my God, you're totally in with them. You become one of them. So important because the industry runs on relationships on connections it runs on it same people work again and again so what jobs should you be doing 
a great job just to start out in, but you will use this job to move into where you want to go. That great job is production assistant because there's always on every single set, one day, eight production assistants. The next day, different shoot, eight, nine, 10, 12 production assistants. You can be a day player on a TV show. That means you just show up for that day. You do that on purpose. You don't want to become staff and work five days a week on that. You can if you want to. But if your goal is an actor, you just want to do a day here, a day there. You pop in there. You meet these people, these people, these people. You pop all over the place because that's your strategy. Okay. If you wanted to be an AD, you'd be like, oh, I want to be staff to really get my days in and get relationships with these people solidly so they hire me again for the next TV show. No, you just want to meet people. So your, chat, your strategy will change. So as an actor, production assistant. But the beautiful thing is that you're using that job for a reason. You're using that job to get into the casting room and to make relationships with producers and directors and casting directors. And all those people can refer you to agents. You're also using that job to do non-union, lower budget shoots, but professional shoots, not student films. You'll only find the good stuff that are principal roles for you, that you can put on your reel, that are professional, that mean something to agents. You'll only find that by being inside. Everybody else will audition for that, but you'll just be like, oh, you're an actor. Okay. We'd love to put you in. They'll put you straight in. Not on the big union TV shows where all of that, all of the actors in there have been doing it forever and everybody was agreed to by the network, but on different kinds of shoots that are still super fun, like a reenactment, like a music video. I mean, there are so many shoots out there, you guys, and so many shoots happening right now, too. Now it's crazy. And I know it might feel like, oh my God, the whole world is just like trying to survive and it's like really uncertain. Not in the film industry. We are working. Uh, we're working like a lot, like on top of each other, shoot after shoot after shoot. So it's a very good time to get in. Let me make sure my thing is working. Oh, check my recording, double check. You know how it's, what it's like. You gotta double check, something could go wrong. I'm talking my recording here. Um, yeah. So, confidence is one of the best things. Because if it's like, if this is all you got and you don't have, and you're on the outside, you don't have any, you're not on set every single week, this is what you got to, you got no relationships. When you audition for a role that you really want, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, please, 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 please. But if you're on set all the time, in front of the camera, behind the camera, you're just like, okay, I'm going to be there. I'm just going to go in to this audition. I do my take on it. And if they like it, if they buy it, great. If they don't, then that's fine. I'm working next week anyway. I am in charge. I'm in control of my career. This is why I started this program, Friends of Film. It was for actors. Because I'm on set all the time, and I see actors get swept up in scams, swept up in spending thousands of dollars, like with the John Casablancas. You get in the professional industry, it's like, John Casablancas, are you fucking kidding me, huh? That's like a management uh, acting classes stuff. Why would you do that? That's not an agent. And then they're like, oh, that's my agent. No, 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 no. So uh, the professional world, you have to know who are the SAG agencies are. And just start making those relationships. <laughs> Vishal's picture is just like, <laughs> it's funny, but probably a method actor. <laughs> All right, so now, in addition to the production assistant work, casting director assistant work gets you inside, director assistant work, producer assistant work, all these are great assistant jobs. They pay 200 to 350 a day production designer assistant work. If you're an actor, would it be great to work as a camera assistant? Yeah, it'd be so great to learn lighting and understand the terms. You'll use that. This will serve you for the rest of your career. All of the knowledge that you get will serve you for your entire career as an actor. And what could happen and what I really, really want you to consider, even though you may not have the understanding yet, is learn a second craft. The reason why you want to learn a second craft is because 
You can make a ton of money and have a great life when you combine acting with a second craft. And that can be anything, absolutely anything. It can be editing, it could be writing, it could be directing, it could be a camera assistant, it could be working the art department, it could be doing sound, it could be doing hair, makeup, it could be doing anything. And the rates are great, six fifty dollars for 12 hours of work. That's the minimum for each department. Notice I'm making $1,800 tomorrow. My, my, my labor rate is $954.10. That's around $1,300 for 12, plus at least $1,000 of equipment. So I'm usually around $2,200 to $3,000 per day. So I'm a department head. But uh, the minimum job for all crafts, all of them, $650 for 12 for union shoots. Now, on non-union shoot, it might be 500 for 12. Maybe it's 500 flat rate. Who cares? You're building something. When I started off, I was doing 550 flat rate, including equipment for National Geographic. I didn't care. Uh, until I did enough of those, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I could actually go into commercials, make so much more money, and I can go anywhere in the world that I want with all the money that I'm making. So maybe I won't work my ass off with National Geographic anymore. So I stopped doing them but I did win an Emmy and got nominated for an Emmy and met a lot of cool people. So it served its purpose. And when you're starting off, you want to have a story, okay? It's very good because what do the casting directors say about going out there and living and being interesting as an actor? <laughs> I just told you, that's what they say, all right? They go, go out there and volunteer, live, do something interesting. Don't just take acting classes. Be something that we can be like, oh, that person is like a specialist, like an astrophysicist specialist, or that person is a DP. That person is also a director and doing a documentary on this. You know, they want something to latch onto that they can sell you. And the great thing about film shoots is that you become very interesting very quickly <laughs> because the shoots make you interesting. <laughs> I mean, that's why I got, that's why I was wanting to get in the film industry. I'm like, I just want to become interesting so I can meet a great man. Isn't that funny? Anybody relate with me in the front row? Probably not. Great woman? Yeah, it's all mostly men. <laughs> but I just wanted to meet great people. I wanted to have a great life. I wanted to meet a great man. So I'm like, I got to become interesting. I got to do something that people don't normally do out there. So that was my big uh, motivator and uh, oh, it worked. All right, that's what I wanted to tell you. Now, this was just for the actors, but for DPs, anybody that's a DP editor, can you put this in the chat? If you are a DP editor, something other than an actor, tell me what you want to do. Uh, Natalie asks, where do you find production assistant jobs? Okay, so now we're getting into the specifics of how you build this career, and that's counterintuitive because these jobs, all of the professional work is not posted. The stuff you're finding out there, Craigslist, Actors Access, Staff Me Up, Backstage, most of that work is student films and free stuff. All of the professional work, every single shoot that I am on is never posted anywhere. We're not looking for people, it's all word of mouth, including the production assistant jobs. So they're always like, who's good, who's good, asking who's good. You've got to become in the minds of a lot of people so that when people start asking around who's good, then they start passing your name around. That takes something. So you can't look for a job and apply for it. There is no application. It's all word of mouth. Make sense? So that's what work study does, is get you right in there, getting the experience and meeting people and getting your name passed around. Now you can still do it. I, I will start you off with work study, showing you how to get on these student films and dig up work. We will use those student films to get our hands on the equipment, to get some experience. And you probably already are doing that stuff. I know some of you guys are already doing student films and getting out there and working on stuff and help working in different departments too. That's awesome. But what might be missing if you're not working consistently is you don't know how to use that work to get into the upper tiered stuff the tier of industry work. So you know how to get the freebie stuff 
Hmm, will I fit? I'm tethered. But how to get into the hopper, hopper work. All right, so there's something called the tier of industry work. Okay, I'm going to separate this down here. This is student films, web series. A lot of actors do web series, series, blah, 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 blah. Freebie work, freebies. And then we got the professional work. And that would be video. That would be news. That would be corporate video. That would be like reenactments. Then you got sports. Oh, huge sector. NBA, NFL, college sports even. Who cares? You've got uh, music videos. You got promos. All this stuff is professional. All this stuff is not posted. This is all professional stuff that you are referred into. And you got TV, which is just so massive. You got scripted TV, you got reality TV, you got nighttime TV. <laughs> I don't know what I wrote there. And then at the top, you got feature films and you got commercials. Why is commercials at the top? Well, once you get in the business, you will know because it is this, the, it's just the biggest budgets, the best people, people from fe the big uni feature films then come into commercials to continue to work. It's just the cream of the crop people, which is commercials is just the cushiest, best work because the people are top and uh, I, there's so much money there. I guess that's why, probably. There's so much money, people can do their best work and there's plenty of money for the technocranes and all of the tricks and all of the trades and all the top people. And that's where, that's where I'm at. Um, but you don't need to be there now. You can be there later. Right now, you may want to be in music videos. You may want to do corporate video. You want to do reenactments. You want to do maybe news, maybe, some, maybe a little bit of sports. You know, as an actor, what you really want to do is you want to do indie films. I'd say that's about right here. So you can do, so, so indie films. Indie films is great for an actor because they can put you in so easily. Rewrite the script, can you say? You know, then you got something that's professional, you're paid, and then agents are interested. That's awesome. So indie films are so good for actors. You can also meet people on these indie films and they're like, hey, I got something coming up in two months. You want to audition for it? And then you audition for it and you get that. So indie films. This is all inside though, and you gotta be here in order to get this stuff. You gotta be in it to get it. You gotta know the people to get it. They gotta see your face. They gotta be like, oh, I love Neil. I love Michael. I love Martin. So, you know, they totally, that's what people say. I love Antonio. They get connected to you, like your, to your heart. Because everybody in the film industry, they're humans and they're just like people that left the nine to five world just like you and they're like, I, there's, it's not a fit for me. But film, creative work is a fit for me. So they're just like you. And people always connect through the heart. You connect through me emotionally. We do. I connect to you emotionally. When I get to know you inside work study, I don't connect to robots. I connect to people like, oh, Janet, I was on the shoot and this is what happened. It made me feel. And what do you think about this? And I'm just like, oh my God. I start to love you. You start to love me. I mean, this is, it's love. The business is love. Now, you can, without work study, go find student films and web series and freebie work. And you certainly can, you probably already have. But the missing link is what it takes to get into this work, which is what you will be doing consistently with work study. So if you can do it, do it and do it now. Because it's so busy out there and that's when it's much easier to get in. That's when this program works so well. Because there are shoots out there that they need people point blank, <laughs> you know, when they got enough people and they don't need anybody in addition, which was like the case in 2008, a lot harder to get in 2008 because everybody like me was working and they had enough people. Sorry, they're not going to hire new people when they got good people that are, they've been working with for years because the whole business is based on trust. But 
when it is, um, they're, now they're calling around right now. And I believe throughout next year, but you want to get into it now. When they're calling around, they're looking for people because everybody's booked and they get desperate. And they'll take people with less experience. And then that's how you, how you get momentum. Because remember, you're not just looking for one shoot. You're work, looking for shoot after shoot after shoot after shoot. That's got to be a lot of shoots happening for you to get on them consistently and make a career out of it. And that's happening now. That's why you want to do this now. If you can do work study, do it now. Be with me now. Let's do this now. And if you're like, I can't do it now. Well, look at that word can't because that'll kill you. Because can't, you shut down your mind. You don't even think about how to do it. But can, I can figure this out. Because really, you're going to be so resourceful here in the film industry all the time. Resourceful. I mean, this is your biggest asset. You know, Michael knows what I'm talking about. You know, he's on a set, working, has some conversations. He's resourceful. So uses the time, uses the people. Might have researched the people before he got there so he can have certain kinds of conversations. Resourceful. He's going to use every day to get to where he wants to be. So uh, that's very valuable, and that is how you move fast. A lot of people can be on set and be asleep at the wheel. They're right there, but they might be a little tired or whatever, and they're around with other people, but oh, I don't know, I'll do it tomorrow or whatever. I am not kidding you. You're, I know you guys are all hungry, you're eager, you're um, doing it out there, and, you, and let me tell you, that is a big asset. Because other people on professional sets are not thinking this way. They're not as hungry as you. They're kind of like where I was at 10 years ago, kind of like, ah, eh, kind of floating along, working, people are calling them. Yes, but the hungry people rule the world, and this is why you can get in and move up. Okay? No, you got something. It's valuable. Okay. Okay, mural making staff writer. Okay, wants to be a staff writer. Antonio. Uh, Vishal says, D, director of photography, mural making, production assistant, camera trainee, reading and writing. Okay, amateur actor for friends, friends, films, and music videos. Okay, you're doing a lot. Sounds good. When you start off, you guys, you can have a very wide range of interests and the whole shebang. You know what I mean? But soon, Vishal, maybe once you get on like maybe 50 sets, I think it's useful to think of it this way. 50 sets, you're going to start narrowing it down and just going, okay, I am really good at this and this, and I'm going to go deep in these areas. I think two things are good. You know, look at it. Look at the people that are doing really well. You know, they're acting. I'm triple threat today is not acting, dancing, and singing, is it? Not really. Not anymore. <laughs> right. It's producing, directing, acting. How do you learn producing? Well, you learn production. You gotta be there. Helping out with production to learn it. <laughs> by the way, if you're like, really, can you learn it by helping out? That's how everybody learns everything. You learn everything by helping out. And then people are like, oh, you understand that? And they give you more responsibilities, more responsibilities, and pretty soon you get smooth, you understand it. And then you get the confidence, <laughs> which is not there anymore. You get the confidence, pretend, confidence. You get the confidence. And that's when it really takes off. The, when you get the confidence, then you're just like, I can do this. Hey, you got a small project, 50 grand, I can produce that. Let me produce that. I've been working with you guys for a long time. I'm ready to produce that. They're not going to say no. I can act in that. I'm ready to act. Can I, I'd love to audition for that. That role is good for me. It's confidence. Can you feel it? Feel that you can see yourself doing that? Yeah, you will get that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will get that. Just got to be in a bunch of shoots around people. And the more you do, the stronger you feel, and the more it'll just be like, this is who I am. Because that confidence is coming from identity, how you're seeing yourself. And you're not just born with confidence. You build that thing. You build it through experiences, but intentional experiences on set. You're not asleep at the wheel. You're out there making relationships having conversations, moving forward with every single shoot. But it happens on shoots. It doesn't happen at your house. You can't get it through reading a book. You can't get it through 
talking to somebody meeting for coffee. You can't get it in a class. You can't get it at film school. You've got to be on set. Everything happens on set. All answers are found on set.